What's going on guys welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be going over how to do this cool trippy warp effect inside of After Effects. So the first thing I'm going to do is shorten my composition here because it's super long it's around 37 seconds and I'm only using around three seconds of this clip so I'm going to hit N on my keyboard and just trim that down to that clip. All right so with this clip selected I'm just going to go up to this roto brush right here and then select the clip right here just double click it. And then I'm just going to highlight this person right here as best as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect. Something like that. Now, it didn't do a great job around the edges right here. So what you're going to do is just go around here, kind of making everything look good. It doesn't have to be too perfect, but just so it's covering up the person and there's nothing that is clipping or stuff that is out of the roto brush. All right, so I just finished up the roto brush, and if you take a look over here, you can see that it did a pretty good job, and it's just a little rough on the edges, so I'm going to make this feather 20, and you can see that cleared up all the roughness on these edges right here. So that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go back over here and just go one frame over, and I'm just going to keep doing that until I see something that messes up in the roto brush, but it's looking pretty good. I don't think I need to change anything. Right there kind of goes away, but that shouldn't be an issue. I'm just going to go to the very end of the clip. And yeah, did a really nice job. Also, you want to change your quality to best and have your version at 2.0. If you don't have it at 2.0, it's fine. It'll still work. Just the 2.0 works a lot better than the 1.0 version. All right, so with the roto brush, you want to freeze this. So it's going to freeze all the frames. So I have 87 frames, so it's going to take a little bit longer. All right, so the rotor brush just finished up, so I can close this layer and go back into my main composition here. And if I play it back, you can see that it's just him without the background. So that's what we want. We want just that, but we want to duplicate that layer and then delete the bottom one that has a rotor brush on it. So this rotor brush right here on the bottom layer, you want to delete that. And then we just have this one. And this one, one with the rotor brush and one without it. So what we want to do is duplicate this one more time. The rotor brush layer. So now we have two rotor brush layers and one background. And on this middle layer, we want to get our S underscore warp um, bubble right here. So it should look something like this. You could try the warp bubble too. I'm not totally sure what the difference is between those two, but I just used the first one. So... When I play this back, you can see it has like this bubble effect around him, which is already pretty cool. You can leave it like this, but I like to add a few more things to it. So I'm going to add scale wipe. And you can see it didn't do anything. So we have to go into this stretch right here. And I'm just going to make this a lot higher and then change the centering. It's so like right here. So stretching over to the left of him. And you can see when I mess with this value right here, it starts out super low and then it kind of expands. So you can mess with the keyframing on that and kind of mess around with that, but I'm just gonna leave it around seven. I think it looks pretty cool. So when I play that back, it's kind of stretched out like that and it goes back in. So it's kind of up to you at this point, but I'm just gonna add a few more effects onto this warp right here just to make it look a bit cooler. So. I'm going to add this S underscore distort chroma effect right here and just bring it onto that same layer that we've applied all these other effects to. And this is adding like a chroma effect to it. But what I'm going to do is change the amount to like, let's do 0 0.1 and then blur the lens a whole bunch, so maybe like 200. Something like that. So that's looking really cool with a little chroma around it. This is with the on and that's with the off. And then we can add some glow. Um, I think the S underscore Z glow probably looks the best for this. And then you can mess with the colors with it. So you can have it red or whatever. I'll try like greenish, maybe like right here. Now, if you want, you can add like a warp chroma to the top layer right here because 
it's a little rough on the edges so if you want to just kind of hide that you can just add a warp chroma and then make the steps like 10 or maybe 20 and make the z distance a lot smaller something like that something pretty subtle but just makes it look a little a little bit better right here so when i play that back you can see that it has a chroma effect around him and then on the bubble there's that warp chroma or that distort chroma on it thank you guys for watching this tutorial make sure to leave a like subscribe and comment down below and peace out